Welcome to the Midweek Word. Let's open in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we come with expectancy tonight to receive from you by faith. Thank you for ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to receive. We believe as a result of hearing your word, our lives will be changed on this night. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Bible you're holding in your hand is a faith book. So if you don't start off in faith when you read it, you won't be able to hear what God has provided for you to hear. It's designed to be read with a kingdom mindset. And that mindset is that the creator of the universe is speaking directly to you. With this mindset, it is impossible for you to remain the same. Now, keep in mind, your current way of thinking may not agree with, with how God says to handle the matter. Romans 12, 2 reminds us, and it says that we are to allow the word of God to transform the way that we think. Joshua 1 and 8 reminds us that we are to meditate on it, chew on it, and to obey what God has said, which positions us to hear and to see what others saved and unsaved are unqualified to receive. Amen. So tonight, the question is, when you read God's word, what are you hearing? Romans ten seventeen reminds us how we position ourselves to hear what God is saying. And it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Did you notice it didn't say faith comes by reading? Yes, reading is an important part of the process, but it doesn't end there. Remember, we must approach God's word in faith believing that it is impossible for him to lie. And with the mindset that he is speaking directly to you and to me. Let's also recognize that anyone saved or unsaved can read God's word, but not everyone can hear what he's saying. Amen. With that said, let's look at what Jesus told Nicodemus, a ruler, a leader, an authority amongst the Jews. Let's go to John chapter 3, Verse 3, out of the Amplified Classic Edition Bible. John chapter 3, verse 3, out of the Amplified Classic Edition Bible. And verse 3 reads, Jesus answered him, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, that unless a person is born again, anew from above, he cannot ever see, know, be acquainted with, and experience the kingdom of God. So if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are eligible to know, be acquainted with, and experience the benefits of the kingdom of God. But let me warn you, it's going to take time, it's going to take faith, and it's going to take a never quit attitude that you're not going to leave this earth until you have finished your course and that you have partaken of every exceeding great and precious promise according to 1 Peter 1, 4. Amen. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 and 11. We're going to stay in the Amplified Classic Edition Bible. Now we don't have the uh, scriptures on the screen, but however you have tuned into the broadcast, there should be those scripture references at the bottom. I want to encourage you that once the message is done, to go back over those scriptures and allow them to speak to you. Allow the word of God to become alive to you. Allow that power to penetrate you so that you can display it when you go out. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 and 11. Verse 10 reads, Then the disciples came to Jesus and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he replied to them, To you it has been given to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them it has not been given. Once again, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the ability to know what he is saying to you. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So if Jesus said you hear his voice, if he says he knows you, he says you obey him, then let's agree with him. Amen. Let's go. Now let's look at a few examples of men who were able to hear and to see what others didn't or couldn't. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. And we're going to read this from the New King James Version. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. 
This is the account of Peter's confession that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. Matthew 16, 13, verse 13 reads, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elisha and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father who is in heaven. Verse 18, and I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, the revelation you are able to receive, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. In other words, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because you recognize who you are and the authority you have been given. Verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You see, up until this point, Jesus had not revealed himself as the Christ, the son of the living God. So where did Peter get this? Verse 17 provides us the answer. The Holy Spirit revealed this hidden truth to Peter. We also see in verse 19 that based upon the revelation that we're able to receive from the Holy Spirit, that we will be given keys and keys represents access. We also will be given authority and boldness comes with our ability to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. In other words, when we have ears to hear, the possibilities are endless. Amen. Now, let's look at another example. Let's go to John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. This is the account of Jesus turning the water into wine. And once again, we're going to stay with the New King James Version. John chapter 2, let's start here at verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were sat there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. So how did Mary know Jesus would help? And how did she know what to tell the servants to do? Just like Peter, when we get around the word of God, we position ourselves to hear and to receive unspoken mysteries and secrets of the kingdom no one else can hear. Amen. John 4, John chapter 1 verses 14 reminds us that the word Jesus was made flesh and dwelt among us. You see, both Peter and Mary had an intimate relationship with the word, which positioned them to hear what others couldn't hear. Let's remember the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1, it says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So we have the account of Peter receiving revelation that Jesus was the Christ. And we also have the account of Mary, that she knew that Jesus would be the source of what the bridegroom needed. Let's look at another account. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 17, once again, in the New King James Version, 2 Kings in the Old Testament, chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. 
Verse 15 reads, And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. You and I have angels assigned to us, and we have to know that they're there by faith, according to Hebrews 1 and 14. Let's close with two scriptures. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 and the first two verses. Once again, we're in the New King James um, Version for these two um, verses. Romans 12, starting at the first verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. Don't be limited by its ways. Hallelujah. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, if we don't discipline ourselves to renewing our minds to the truth of God's word, we won't be able to take advantage of the advantage that's been given to us. Now let's look at John 16, verses 13 through 15. And we're going to take this particular passage from the classic King James Version. John 16, verses 13 through 15. And we're going to start at verse 15. And it reads, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit that's living on the inside of everyone who has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. When he has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, Jesus said. Therefore said I, that he shall take a mind and shall show and reveal it unto you. This is the assignment of the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit that's living on the inside of everyone who has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. But he requires our cooperation in order to instruct us and teach us in the way that we should go. Proverbs 20, 27 reminds us that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. God is going to illuminate your spirit, your belly. And Romans 8 and 14 reminds us, said, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So our father expects us to be led and to receive daily from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as we close, let me share with you my daily approach before reading God's word. This is a prayer Paul prayed for the saints at Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus. And that's you and that's me. And it's taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 7 through 19 out of the Amplified Bible. And the prayer reads, Father, as I read your word today, I'm asking that you grant me a spirit of wisdom and revelation, insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of you. May the eyes of my heart be flooded with light so I can know and understand the hope to which you call me. I believe I will know and understand the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of your power in and for me. I believe I receive. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're going to stop there on tonight, but I want to thank you for taking the time to watch the broadcast. Now, if this message has been a blessing to you, let me encourage you to share it with a friend. And I also want to invite you to join us live at the Connection Church this Sunday at 10 a.m. for our morning worship. And we're in a series right now talking about the importance of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Now, the address is Garfield High School, 14,000 Smoketown Road in Woodbridge, Virginia. Now, if you're unable to join us live, you can also watch the replay of the broadcast at 7 p.m. Sunday evening, the same way you're watching right now. 
I want to encourage you to continue to enjoy your evening and keep chewing on God's word. Amen.